So here comes the time. We have uh, a little talk about uh, Godot and uh, Python. So uh, I'm Emmanuel, for who uh, wasn't uh, there uh, this morning. And uh, I recently got nicknamed on the, the Godot's disc Discord uh, Python Fanatic. So now you know why I want to put Python on Godot. That's one of the reasons. Um, some other reasons are Python is a really nice language. The proof could be that uh, GDScript was uh, inspired by Python. Uh, but it's not Python enough for me and for some people who doesn't want to learn a new language like uh, GDScript. So yeah, there is a need for this, I think. So what does it look like? It's kind of really similar to, to GDScript. The main difference is uh, in GDScript, maybe uh, you know that uh, one file equal one class. So you don't have function, you only have methods. And uh, the difference is in Python, of course, uh, in one file you have a global variable, function, and you can create classes. So the idea is, do I have a pointer? No. Yeah, it's going to be hot if I cannot point anything. Whatever. So uh, just try to imagine the pointer is moving to the left on the expose keyword. So uh, for maybe you don't know Python, it's uh, what is called a decorator. So it's just a kind of way to say, okay, this class is a bit special. It does special thing. So in this file, you see that uh, the class player is exposed. So from a Godot point of view, all the, the rest won't be, uh, won't be visible and uh, it will only uh, use the player class as uh, the representant of this file. Um, yeah, so basically it looks really like uh, GDScript. As you can see, there is um, the export keyword to export, um, export a variable and uh, you can use uh, the underscore ready function method, just, just like in JavaScript. The only difference is a bit more Pythonic, of course. And uh, yeah, it's uh, compatible with JavaScript, which means that you can really easily uh, load a, a file, which is a, a Python file from JavaScript, and it will act just like if it was a regular JavaScript. Uh, now, how do you do that? Uh, maybe you know in, um, in Godot, uh, it's an uh, engine written in C++, but everything is uh, really, um, how to say, it's, um, there is a lot of introspection into the, the engine, which means uh, that um, all the nodes that you can uh, put into your scene, like uh, the 2D node or the, the, sorry, the resources, the... Um, the particle and so on and so forth. All those things are class in C++, but uh, they are declared with this kind of macro. You see a GD class, and so with these things, you can uh, you can tell at runtime uh, that this class has uh, the certain method, and uh, those methods take certain parameters and so on and so forth. So from this. It's something really powerful, powerful because it means that you can just at runtime understand all how is both uh, Godot. Uh, the good thing about this is, is this is how you create script. So GDScript is uh, using those things in order to, uh, at runtime, being able to call a certain C++ class from its name, which is written into the GDScript file. Uh, so the idea with uh, making a, a Python script is uh, really the same than this. So you have uh, this C++ class, which is called uh, script in, um, in, in Godot, and you just have to implement this, uh, this class and also a couple of other small class which uh, tell, for example, that your script will have an extension file the, like .p or .gd to, in order to Godot to understand when you want to load a node with a name, uh, sorry, not another script, with a name ending in .gd, it will be a gd script, so you have to, to call the gd script uh, class instead of the Python class, for example. Uh, so yeah, you have to do that. And uh, after that, you can, um, 
you can just use the what is called the GD class, the class DB, sorry, which uh, is kind of C++ class which uh, register all the, um, the class and the method from uh, the node in, uh, in Godot, not the node, the, um, the class, the Godot class, and then you can uh, use everything inside Godot from Python. Uh, yeah, there is plenty of, I mean, it was, uh, it was a plan at first, and it was like uh, in August, last August, and uh, in fact it was a lot harder than this, but it's plenty of small little things. Uh, first thing uh, I tried to, to implement Python into uh, Godot was to use uh, what is called MicroPython. It's uh, another implementation of Python. I mean, Python is a really big language. There is plenty of, um, of life around it. It's not uh, like some other language with uh, only one implementation. And so one of these implementations, uh, MicroPython, it's a really small implementation. It's already focused on embedded system. For example, uh, you can run uh, MicroPython on really, really tiny boards uh, that, you know, these kind of things that just power your, your dishwasher or your toaster, that kind of thing. Uh, the idea uh, to use MicroPython was uh, this way, it was really easy to embed it into Godot. It didn't have a lot of, um, a lot of requirement, uh, requirements. Uh, yeah, it was just a small, smaller. Uh, the, another idea was uh, there was no gil, which is a, a global interpreter leak, lock, which means that uh, with MicroPython you can, you should be able to run multiple threads uh, at the same time, which is really interesting from a gaming point of view because it means that you can go faster. Um, the reality was quite different because. Uh, because the API, the API was a real, real mess. So, I mean, MicroPython is really uh, focused on the memory efficiency because uh, when you want to run Python on a toaster, you have uh, almost no memory. So you have to be really cunning about everything. I mean, if you have two strings which are the same, they must be stored only once. And this seems like uh, not much, but it's something really important there and it makes things really complex. So, yeah. It was really hard. Uh, another reason uh, about dropping MicroPython was at the beginning I saw we could uh, use this kind of smaller implementation to do uh, sandboxing, you know, uh, in order to have uh, your script language on Godot and the script language can only access the function provided by Godot, for example, uh, changing a node, loading, um, loading something, creating a new node some somewhere, only those kind of things, and it couldn't do some side effect on your computer. I mean, MicroPython, uh, sorry, Python is a uh, really, um, uh, there is plenty of possibility you can do with Python, like you can open file, you can uh, create uh, new processes, uh, and so on and so forth, so you could mess a lot if you have a full uh, Python on your Godot. So I thought you could uh, stub plenty of things much easier with MicroPython, which was true. But in fact, uh, I realized during um, la the first GodoCon, which was uh, in, uh, in February, last February, uh, we realized that uh, doing sandboxing wasn't really interesting because ba basically Godot couldn't do this and it already provided plenty of possibility to mess around with your computer. So yeah, this was not needed at all, so I could drop this, and so MicroPython wasn't a good candidate for implementing. So after that, uh, I switched to something more interesting, which was uh, the good old C Python, which is uh, the default implementation of Python, uh, and with something which was called uh, PyBind11. Uh, maybe you know uh, the C++ Boost library, they are making um, binding between Python and C++, uh, which are static and really powerful, and so this is the same thing, but with uh, C++11. If you don't know C++, or if you don't know C++11, you just consider it something really, really complex. I mean, it's like uh, people who don't do C++, C people who do C++ like kind of wizard, and people who do C++, C people doing C++11 like kind of wizard. So it's the wizard of the wizard. It's the Gandalf of programming who does that. And what does it mean is uh, when something breaks, you have no idea why it breaks. But when it works, it feels really great. Uh, 
the great thing about this was uh, it was static binding, which means that, uh, for example, when you want to bind the, the node class, there is plenty of methods. Let's say there is uh, 10 methods for the node class, the, um, the Godot node class. Uh, it means that you have to write a C++ file which uh, said for this method you have to bind it, for this method you have to bind it, and so on. Uh, the good thing is uh, because uh, Godot can do introspection, which means that you run Godot and you can ask, okay, what are my, uh, all my possible nodes and what are the methods in my nodes? It means that you can create a script which uh, will generate your binding for, I mean, at runtime for free. And after that, you get this, uh, this binding, which is a C++ file, and you compile it. Uh, the drawback was, uh, it was huge. It was damn huge. Uh, I mean, I don't remember how many classes there is in Godot, but it's something like around maybe 100 or 200, I don't know. But uh, it ends up with uh, 100,000 uh, lines of uh, C++ with uh, plenty of templates and variadic templates and all this wizardry you, nobody knows about. Uh, and it takes, yeah, just for this file, five minutes and five gig gigabytes of RAM just for the compilation. And the output was huge too. It was uh, 100 megabytes more. So for example, your Godot binary is something like, let's say, 10 or 20 megabytes. And now Godot with Python would be 110 megabytes, so it's not acceptable at all. Uh, so we have to move on and find something else. And uh, yeah, uh, maybe you know in, uh, in Python there is uh, another implementation which is called PyPy, which is, uh, I mean, it's known for being something really, really smart. Uh, it's a crazy thing. And the guy who did PyPy uh, created something which is called CFFI. And the idea is, you don't want to use C to do your binding, but you want to use Python. So you do your binding in Python. It means that uh, it's really easier because Python is an easier language than C. And uh, yeah, it's a bit slower, but you don't care at all because it was easier to do. Uh, so you have more time to do optimization elsewhere. And uh, yeah, of course it's, uh, it's compatible with PyPy, which I was talking earlier, and with PyPy is really fast, so you get your optimization for free. Uh, so it's pretty nice. The only problem was uh, this solution was only working with C, and uh, as I said, uh, Godot is written in C++. So in order to make this work, you have to take all your, um, your API in C++ and to create kind of wrapper API in C. And it's really cumbersome work, and so I, I didn't want to do that. But Fortunately, there was someone uh, there. Say hi to the. So this guy, he, he is really nice. And uh, before even I think I should use this, he already made this available. And then he said, mm, you know, you should use this. And I said, yeah, I will see. And uh, like three months later, I said, yeah, you're right. I need this. So yeah, that's great. And uh, now, uh, yeah, we are working full time to, to make this uh, happen. Uh, basically, there is a, the code is working. Uh, you can do uh, some nice things like uh, creating some nodes, or moving things, calling function, calling Python function from GDScript or calling GDScript function from Python. Uh, the, um, you can run, for example, PyTest if you if you know to do unit test. So it's really nice because uh, there is no such no such thing for testing. I think in GDScript. Uh, the only trouble right now is uh, GD native, so which is um, the root or uh, Python script is built on, is not done yet. There is plenty of building which need to be um, to be finished. So this is what I'm working on right now. And there is some small things that's left, like uh, the signal and network stuff, which are not done. But I think it's not big things. Uh, so when all this will be finished, I hope it will be finished before this summer, uh, we will have some really nice uh, Python implementation. Uh, yeah, I hope we will have this for the 3.0 because uh, there is not enough new feature in the 3.0, so one more would be good. Uh, <laughs> And so after that, we can uh, do something more. It's uh, don't use uh, C Python, the default implementation, but use PyPy, as I was talking to you, uh, which means that everything will be faster. So maybe even, uh, I mean, GDScript is, uh, is really uh, nicely fit into Godot because uh, Godot is GDScript and GDScript is Godot. So even if the language is not optimized, the performance are not terrible. 
but from for Python, it's a bit different because uh, you have to do all of those layers. You have uh, your C++ stuff, then you switch to the C uh, with GD native, and then you switch to the CFFI binding, and then you buy, you switch to the Python. So it's a really long thing to do, and so you can expect a lot of overhead. And uh, the good thing with PyFi, it's, uh, it makes everything faster, so yeah, uh, we can guess that it will be fast enough. And last thing I want to do, but it's not yet there, it's uh, the really good thing about GDScript is uh, you can have your Godot binary on one side and you just download it from the, the Godot website. And on the other side, you just compile what you need to compile and you put this together and it works. It's really cool. But for the moment, you cannot do that with, uh, with the Python binding because the Python binding still use uh, not use only the GD native stuff, but it still uses some C++ API from Godot, which means you have to compile Godot with the Python uh, binding. And so it means that you have to download a, a special uh, Python with a, a special uh, Godot with Python binary to use it. Uh, what I would really find nice would be to be able to just have a shared library, which will be uh, just a binding and that you can run uh, along with a uh, regular Godot, uh, with some, I mean, thanks to some extension to GD native, which are not for the moment uh, ready or even thought about it. Uh, yeah, I think I arrived to my last slide. Uh, this was a, a really fast presentation. This is a rip off from the last presentation, which was a really fast presentation also. So uh, I'm waiting for your question. No, it's not working. You have to hit it harder. I would say both. I mean, there is some really simple feature like uh, syntax color, coloration, which are really easy and uh, are already available. Uh, other stuff is like um, completion, and uh, I think it's much more difficult to get right. And on the other side, uh, I think it's really easy to have a completion from uh, an outside editor, just like uh, Sublime Text. Something like that, because you have the the, Py, the Python uh, binding, which are already there and which uh, describe how the class should be. So, I think it's not really it doesn't worst the the price. I think, at least for the moment. Uh, my, my final goal would be to only rely on GD native for everything in order to have, uh, like I said, just one binary which is totally different from Godot that you can pick up from your website and put them together and it works. So that means everything that is not ready in GD native need to be. <laughs> Uh, that said, for the moment, uh, I don't use um, the editor stuff from GD Native. I use them from the C++ uh, interface, but I don't think that changed a lot. Uh, 
there is uh, one really great feature in Python, which is called PDB, which is the Python debugger. Uh, it means that basically anywhere in your script you can write uh, pdb.setTrace and uh, when Python goes and start and end up in this line, uh, it stops the script and it listens on the, the std in and so then you can uh, type on the console and uh, you can explore all your what's happening and change everything. So it's really dynamic. Uh, compared to GDScript is really, really powerful because you can really change everything you want. You can. Uh, uh, you can call new function, you can do something that was very... Oh, you mean on uh, on device which are really shitty. Uh, I didn't, uh, I, uh, I didn't uh, think about it for the moment, but I think uh, right now uh, you have a way to take the STD out, I mean all the prints you do in your uh, GD script, you have the way to take it back on your computer. So uh, basically you have uh, one way, and so you need another way just to send characters uh, to, the, um, to the target. So I mean, half of the work is already done, and I think the other is pretty simple, but not sure. Yeah, that sort of wraps it up. <laughs>